I do. That is unfortunate. I'm very sorry, truly. Well, then I'm very lucky. I met someone who, who not only helped me choose the right path, but is happy to listen to my whining. Your parents loved and didn't survive hardship, but that doesn't mean the same thing won't, will happen to you. What if you find true love? Someone who won't leave you no matter what. And break my beloved... Eh, and and break my beloved... They love's heart when I die in her arms five years later? That's a fine thing to do with the person who... You, person you love then again there's a chance i'll inspire some tragic bard to write a tearful ballad thanks for the, uh, thanks mongols have short lifespans so i wish there was something worth hearing well all right my mom was a smuggler okay where are we done uh mongols have short lifespans but you don't look like you're getting old or dying how old are you i'm as old as i look no surprises there but remember soul he's 10 years older than me I remember him back when he was a fearless warrior, and day by day, I watched him turn into an old man. Him and my father. It happens very quickly. First, you miss a shot because you don't see the target as, clear as and clearly as you used to. You think it's because your eyes are tired? You tell yourself it'll get better tomorrow. Then you notice you're having trouble breathing, that climbing is harder than before. Your fingers stop bending. You have to tie your sword to your hand. Yeah, my dad kept diaries making all the uh, all the signs and I saw it too. The last year I had to help him and get out of bed. Helped him dress. Told him that we should have stayed on the surface, and he joked that dodging a goddess was be mm, was uh, behavior unworthy of a crusader. He meant for Rasm. Wanna talk about Wendwog. Are you sure? Alright. Tell me about your connection with Wendwog. And a connection to Wenwog. I mean, where do I start? We grew up together, trained together. Uh, she was the chief's daughter. She was groomed to be the best all her life. And then I then I came along. Hmm, we were rivals, but we dragged each other out of the tights, out of tight spots too. I've always been drawn to grand heroic uh, gestures, sometimes idiotic ones. Whereas Wendu liked to roam unexplored passages, finding new caves and making maps. She wanted to be a great huntress, the one who'd make it through the maze, uh, shield maze. But instead, she... It'd be better if she died. The death of a friend is painful, but watching a friend become a shadow of their former self is unbearable. She doesn't think she's a shadow of her former self. Of course, she thinks she did everything right, because the second she starts to doubt herself, She'll have to face the truth, to admit that she was just a cannibal that demons use as they wish. She wants to get stronger and stronger, but for what? I'll never understand what drives her. Are you friends, or were you more than that? Wow, you really don't pull your punches, do you? <laughs> there was a time when I asked myself the same question. Wendawag knew me better than anyone, and she understood me better than anyone. She was the girl I... Uh, she was the first girl I ever... Uh, you know. Oh my. But we never loved each other. Maybe I could have grown to love her, but it always seemed like she never understood what love was. Maybe she just wasn't capable of those things, you know, th those kinds of feelings. Thank you. So, can you wear a hat with your one horn? Sure I can, but certain designs don't suit me too well. <laughs> I found everything out. Thank you. Oh, man. So much talk. So much talk. Ah, uh, tell me about your people. Of course, what would you like to know? What's it like living in the caves? Oh. Imagine that the entire world, there's only a few hundred like you. There's not not an inch of fertile ground anywhere. Nowhere to grow grain for bread or cotton and linen for cloth. Your neighbors are beasts who want to eat you, or parasites who want to infect you with their larva. And then eat you. Uh, and it's not that bad because you... And try to eat most of the things that are trying to eat you, sometimes at the risk of getting poisoned, sometimes with almost no risk at all. In the worst years, there's not a single living thing anywhere to be found, predator or prey. That's when you eat mushroom soup. I'd say three times a day, but there was barely enough for once every three days. But life underground has its upsides. Uh, pun intended. <laughs> Where's it at? There's no risk of losing uh, losing the roof of your head. There's no bad weather. Uh, not counting the earthquake, of course. 
Are we really the descendant of Cruc uh, first crusaders? More like demon spawn, aren't we? Sad but true. Without the demons, there would be no mongrels. A magic of the world, a magic of the world wound that affected our ancestors and made their children the way we are. Like most in our tribe, Chief Saul fancies himself a descendant of the, a descendant of the underground crusaders. The ones our heroic ancestors left to guard the caves. I don't know if it's true or not. Angel came out and uh, came to our caves for a reason. Maybe he remembered us. And those were evil and dangerous times after the Cru first crusade. Hundreds of crusaders began having children and the babies were born with fangs and horns. Ugh. That's not good. Uh, uh, people didn't like the new look. The Inquisitors, and the Inquisitors sure didn't. So our ancestors fled persecution and made a home for themselves down, down there, under the ground. They probably intended to find a cure for their children and hoped to return in time, but it never happened. Instead, the World Wound's terrible legacy has passed down from generation to generation. Mongrel parents can only guess what their child will look like. Each of us is born with a new mutation. Many mutations are fatal. But out of the caves, we usually don't congratulate the family member for the birth of a child until they turn at least three. Most don't even get a name before that. There's no point. Hasn't been that long since the first... Uh, hasn't been that long since the first crusade. Why do you know so little about your ancestors? Our lives are much shorter than most up, uplanders. Up here, only a few generations passed, and many still live to remember the old Basar Chorus. Oh, okay. Uh, Queen Galfrey, for example. But, uh, where, oh, but where we live, mongrels start getting old much earlier than humans, much faster and, we, and with more devastating consequences. Mm, few live past 40, and fewer still live long enough to mm, die of old age. Hunger, disease, and monsters from the deep are more effective killers than time. Uh, do you have a way to tell uh, day and night? You can't see the sun in your uh, you can't see this I can't see the sun in your eyes. Uh, every mongrel settlement has a big gong, which we treat like a, a relic. The gong keeper hits it twice a day to mark the beginning and end. But this custom doesn't keep time very pres uh, precisely. Every mongrel child has snuck up to the gong to strike it at the wrong time at least once. And just out of pure mischief. Nothing could keep me away from it. Not even the fact that I only have one ear. Which means it would take double the punishment. Which means it would take double the punishment once I was caught. So sometimes the wrong strikes get mixed in with the right one. And the tribe can find itself jumping up to greet the morning in the middle of the night. Do Mongol tribes fight each other? There were some skirmishes, and I've been forced to kill my kinfolk before too. Fights most often break out over food. We have laws in the caves, written and unwritten rules that were that we follow. We respect one another's rights to live, but hunger can push a per push a person over the edge. Ali, there's just so much reading. You're the only member of the uh, Nithalm tribe to call all your people Mongrel. Why is that? Uh, because all Galarian calls us that. I don't see the point of all this uh, hemming and hewing. Thank you. Uh, what do you think of your life on the surface? Of course, as far as, uh, as living conditions, the surface is definitely a better place to be. It's easier to get uh, good food and water, not to mention build a house and even grow a few things. An older, well-established settlement you don't have to deal with. As for the kind of lives you have, I heard a story about demon worshippers abducting a whole family and sacrificing them one by one while the others watched. Ooh. Yeah, that definitely happens. And I heard another story. A young blacksmith lost his arm in a fire, couldn't work to feed his wife and baby. They tried their best and lived from hand to mouth, but they were still destitute. In the end, the desperate blacksmith robbed a traveler one night on the road. There were some brave crusader knights nearby. They caught the robber and threw him in prison. Not long after, his wife smothered the baby and hanged herself. Up here, the same person can probably say he's protecting the innocent from demons. Then look at the other, uh, then look the other way while the same innocent starves just because they were born into a poor family. 
Queen Galfrey prolongs her life with sun orchard elixirs that cost enough to feed an entire city. Back in our caves, everyone is equally poor, and if one person starves, the whole tribe starves. We don't abandon our own in times of trouble. Anyway, look who I'm talking to. You must know, you must know life on the surface much better than I do. I never leave a needy person in trouble. I've been given more than most, which means I'm now more able to help others. A fitting reply. Don't take my words as a reproach. I like grumbling as much as cracking jokes. You said you were prepared to risk your life to do something meaningful. What exactly did it mean? To invent a new salad and have it named after me. <laughs> oh god, Lon. Uh, truth be told, I don't know. It would be much easier if I, if all I really wanted was to kill demons, then, uh, then a few more demons, then more demons after that. Good, honest rage and no needless brooding. I think I actually envy the warriors who can live like that, but I can't. Life's taught me anything. It's that there are no easy choices. Ain't that the truth? Uh, that's what I want for my dumb short life to have met uh, something. You think I have an exaggeration opinion? Uh, that exaggerated opinion in myself? If some scaly freak crawls out of the caves and wants to take control of the ward stones and flaunt Iomade's banner. Any fool can charge at the front lines of the demonic armies and die there. But what good will that do? I want something meaningful, you know? Even if I have to pay the price, uh, the highest price, especially if I have to, pay, especially if I have to pay it. There are plenty of worthier uh, people who need to survive. Thank you. All right, we're not going to continue any more uh, official talk like that. Instead, we're going to go ahead and... Okay, what, uh, any success? How's the city? Uh, what is our main objective? You heard what the Newman said. So we got to take the... Uh, they're going to desecrate the world's uh, ward stone and blow up the whole barrier around the world wound. Okay, so we need these ward stones. What are they? We already know about. Let me ask a few personal questions. Where are you from? I was born in Canabras. I grew up on a farm out just outside, but my, uh, my way back home lay at the end of a long, winding road. How did you become paladin? I don't much like to remember it, believe it or not. The story of how I became a paladin is also the story of how I failed to become a knight. My parents were crusaders. May their souls rest uh, stand together in Iomedes' celestial army. When I was born, they retired from the war and started preparing me uh, to continue their legacy. But my father was an orc. He'd, he'd be pressed to find a calmer, wiser, and more pious servant of the goddess than he. But still, all his, all his life, he was dogged by si uh, sideways looks and whispers. When I grew older and it was time for me to serve, I decided anywhere but Canabras. That was where my father had served loyally. I took my vows from the goddess, granted me the powers of paladin, but even then, not a single order would accept me into their ranks. I spent another six months knocking on doors before I realized the simple truth. I serve Iomade, not these people. I don't have to prostrate myself before them, so I left as a paladin, but not a knight. The things are bound to be tough for you, too. Most common folk here fear death and hate the undead even more than they do orcs. I'm sure you're no stranger to sideways looks and whispers behind your back. <laughs> Yay! I was wondering when something like this was going to actually come uh, pop up about me being undead or something of the match. Mm. Uh, how did you be, uh, How did you come to join a knightly order? I left the last wall. I had happened in time and I was tracking a gang of bandits, which my employer suspected was a cover for a Razmiran spies. I managed to find their lair, but inside I found something far more dangerous than spies. An unholy temple of Zond Kuthon. When I broke in there, cultists were about to sacrifice someone. The person who was destined to become my wife and Napio. But that's another story, which we already heard. After I cut down the cultists, I examined the papers and couldn't believe my eyes. The network of evil cults had spread throughout all of Aviston. 
Even worse, the documents clearly show that their allies, the, Temp uh, the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth, had infested my native Canabras. Nevia and her, uh, Nevia and I hurried to Can Canabras. Couldn't trust anyone. The papers indicated that the cultists had infiltrated everything. Luckily, I had some experience in investigation, and my beloved. The half orc smiles warmly. She knew her way around working locks, tailing people, and trading information with the city's bottom feeders. And soon we'd uh, soon we'd defeated, alas, not the whole Hydra, but a few of its heads. You know who turned out to be the leader of the cultists? The commander of the Eagle Watch. Wow! Corruption leads to the highest bidder. Uh, can you imagine while on prelude, Harun was chasing witches throughout and through the city, the enemy had infiltrated the very order responsible for internal security. How did the people of Canaveral feel about your background? They tolerated surprisingly well. Oh, okay. I kept seeing those same sideways looks, scowls, and different whispers, but uh, once they used to whisper behind my back, and point at me. Now they whisper in my ear and point at someone else. It's so strange to be on the other side of humiliation. Uh, I must have figured out by now uh, that I'm talking about tieflings. It's true, there are many of them among the cultists and few among our crusaders. And our fighters do all they can to drive away those who would be um, who, um, drive away those who would be our allies. People shun them, call them Harilu's spawn, or worse. Tell me about Anivia. Man and Tom. Uh, we already met that one. Thank you for your thank you for your answers. Tell me about the Eagle Watch. We already uh sort of heard that. Oh wait, uh, this is my personal crusade. First, oh maybe uh, small order created to fight not only demons but also the enemy within. Uh, to maintain the purity of the paladin ranks, prevent heresy, and identity. Identify spies and it failed miserably at that. The Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth infiltrated it and formed their nest within its ranks. On the contrary, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be a headquarters at the Defender's Heart. The cultists would have served up the city on a, on a platter to the demons. Yes, that's true. It's a good thing we achieved something. Thank you. Oh, hey, there's Camellia. Oh, Sila's right there. to the basement. Let's go to the basement. I got to I got to look at all this stuff now. Surrender of thy soul, Delvon. How may they protect us? I <laughs> got you again. How many times is that today? Take your jokes and shove them, tiefling. Whoa, easy there, chief. Don't hit me. Go ahead. Don't take too long, though. Hey, chief. Hey, Dreamboat. Come over here. I want to talk to you about something. Something really important. Quit bothering the decent people in here, Wolgif, or I'll knock your teeth out. What's it to you, Delvin Dum Dum? You were told to guard me, and I'm not stopping you. But no one told me I had to shut my trap. <laughs> Who are you? Wolgif. Wolgif Jeffdo. I deal in useful things. I can get you whatever you want. Anything. But there's just one problem. <laughs> Tiefling rattles his chains and gives you a meaningful look. And what do you want from me? I'll lay it out for you. Simple job, 30 minutes tops. We go someplace, talk to someone, and in return, whatever you want, I'll get it for you. 
Some extra rations, no problem. Armor, weapons, scrolls, you name it. It's as good as yours. If you need my help with something, whistle and I'll be there. I'm handy enough with knives too, and even my magic know-how isn't too shabby. <laughs> what a load of guff. If you were good at magic, you wouldn't be stuck in here now, would you? Don't you listen to him, Chief. He'd find fault with the Queen herself. I'll be useful to have in battle, and I'll sell whatever you want at a reasonable price. It's your lucky day. You won't meet another gem like me in Canabras. Why are you in chains? Does it really matter? Don't get hung up on the past, Chief. Don't look to the future. Live in the here and now. He was caught thieving. <laughs> oh, wow. Brat is just like, hey, he was thieving. Okay. Uh, your shadow, what was that? <laughs> Get me out of here and I'll tell you. And don't worry, it's not contagious. He be vibing? Yeah, he be very vibing. Well, I can't help you while you're chained up. How do I, how can That's I for you? easy. You know, Erebeth, feisty looking gal, always wears armor. You can't miss her. She's the meanest fighter in the whole city. When you see her, put in a good word for me, will ya? Tell her there's this guy, Wolgif, locked up for no good reason in the defender's heart. Well, for the follies of his youth. And he really wants to get out on bail so he can keep up his good behavior and make a contribution to society. You got that? Will you do it? All right, I'll talk to Erebeth about <laughs> you. I knew I could count on you. Knew it the moment I laid eyes on you. So far, the best voice actor here. <laughs> out on patrol. Oh, boy. Well, I suppose we go ahead and talk to her, I guess. I am Fordham Autumn Hayes at your service. You need any help? Do not trouble yourself on my behalf. A local healer tended to me. Besides, I come from a resilient, hardy people. My body will endure both the wounds and the poisons delivered through them. Who are you? Ah, uh, for um, foreign Autumn Hayes, I've come here from Kionin because I am a hunter. Uh, all the party members ha are 3D. All of them have amazing development and almost equally good writing. Gotcha. Thank you. Who wounded you? Ah, uh, Sander and an accomplice to demons. The quarry I am hunting in this inhosp inhospitable place. I'm Z. You can trust me, I might be able to help you. It would be impolite to refuse such a direct and friendly uh, offer. Who is your query here in Mendev? I was hunting a fugitive. A Descarite by the name of mm, Kaylisa. Pains me to admit that there are heinous mal malefactors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heinous malefactors such as her among my noble kin. I managed to catch up to her in Canabras, and I wounded her. Then the demons appeared, and the city was engulfed in flames. I was injured in the battle that ensued, and couldn't free her soul from its service to her dark master. I'm sorry for your misfortune. I hope things will turn out differently next time. There is no need for pity. Our ancient kind, our ancient kind, is blessed with great longevity. We can, we gain a deeper understanding of the world than other races. And we and we learn our lessons better than uh, anyone. That goes for learning from our mistakes as well. I survived, which means I will be more prepared when we next we meet. I wish to aid you in your hunt. Thank you, but this is my mission, and I'm used to facing all manner of terrors on my own. I do appreciate your willingness to help. If you happen to meet Kailisa, take caution. She has turned many innocent souls the path of evil, and darkness has uh, rewarded her with many gifts. Her appearance alone will tell you that. It is warped. The ignite skin, the malicious stare of her blood-red eyes, the bestial teeth. She's more monster. You know, Her skin is dark, her hair perpetually white. Her red eyes can see perfectly in the dark. Uh. 
do 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 boo oh no what have i done what happened oh well of course that's gonna happen anyways let's uh let's try this again shall we I'm gonna get this chat. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna have to try and get this done the hard way. She can get it. She can get it. She just has a, a 1 out of 20 roll, so literally a 2% chance to get this. Okay, I'm just gonna try this a couple more times. Yeah, don't worry. Her skin is dark. Oh, got it. Um, her skin is dark. Her hair uh, pre uh, preternaturally white. Her uh, red eyes can see perfectly in the dark, which, to my dismay, I've come to know more uh, know from experience. But bright light mm, causes her skin pain. I used an alchemical powder that explodes in a dazzling flash, and she cried out as if I had stabbed her. It appears that this woman is a drow. Her face is also known as uh, known as as dark or cavern elves. Uh, they are rarely seen on the surface. I'd like to know more about you. Do to do. -do. Fugitives. Unlikely. It's more possible that her dark service has left a brand similar to the one twisted. She didn't even believe me. But we Beautiful. got it, chat. Here's another one. you listen to him chief he'd find does it really he was caught <laughs> that's easy you know, <laughs> i knew i okay well um let's go and uh talk the earbud 